Let's tell you a little bit about this. Uh, we're waiting for an article in the Washington Post, and it, uh, supposedly they've been working on it. You know, one of the great things, well, perhaps one of the only good things about the COVID uh, pandemic was when Dave Portnoy would do his one bite pizza reviews. He would go into a pizza place, take a bite, and do a review. Uh, this weekend, over in Brooklyn, here in New York, he's having a, a one bite pizza festival. And apparently, the Washington <laughs> Post, there he is right there, the <laughs> Washington the Post has decided. Uh, there's a writer there by the name of Emily Hale, uh, who apparently is working on what Dave Portnoy thinks is a hit piece on him and his pizza, One Bite Pizza Empire. Yeah, so she, it's a hit piece. Yeah, she sent this email to his advertisers and said, "We are planning to write about the festival and how some of the sponsors have drawn criticism by seeing seeming to associate themselves with Dave Portnoy." Who has a history of misogynistic comments and other misogynic? <laughs> yeah, he couldn't pronounce it. And other problematic behavior. So he picks up the phone, he calls her, yeah. confronts her about it, and says, "What are you trying to do?" And this was their conversation. It's sort of a reporting tactic when you want someone to respond, you kind of have to indicate that there might be something negative, and then you get them to engage. That's all I was trying to do. I really wanted them to engage with me. That is a sad state of journalism if that's a tactic that you have to, well, what I would say is make up something sure about somebody. The very people who are now trying to threaten these pizzerias and be like, are you going to write a hit piece and associate you with this bad person? They are all fighting to shut these people down two years ago. They didn't want them open. I'm the one who was fighting to keep them open, raise money, keep small business. And then they turn around to these very people that we we're trying to help save and say, you shouldn't do business with them. It really, they have become activists. So what he did brilliantly, uh, Lawrence, is he got the reporter on the phone. He recorded. It's a 12-minute conversation, at which time she initially says, deny she wrote the letter. He goes, no, I'm reading the letter. Oh, that letter. Okay, I got it. And he goes, oh, it's just a letter to find out. Well, what would you do? And you're assuming that I'm this uh, sexual harasser. You didn't even ask me for my side of the story. You didn't put in the story that I raised $500 million for small businesses during the pandemic. Did you have any interest? Why would you even do this story? You're just looking to hurt me with my festival, which is supposed to attract 5,000 people over the weekend in Coney Island, which is a win for the area, win for the company, and a win for the sponsors. But instead, this is the Washington Post going at them. They just didn't plan for this type of aggression. That's exactly right, Brian. And let's be clear, this is not journalism. This is activism. Why are you contacting advertisers? How is that a part of the story? Typical. Are you still searching in the midst of writing this piece? But again, I think we've reached a different point in this country. Every uh, um, author has their own tribe now. Uh, every personality has their own tribe. And I think the American people are just sick of the council culture. They're sick of the media going after people that they adore. They're sick of the lack of grace for people when they make mistakes. I, I just think their time is up at this point. I don't, no one reads the Washington Post anyway. Well, I tell you what, uh, we've been on the Washington Post website this morning looking to see if the piece <laughs> is up, and it isn't yet. Well, and when it is, we'll figure out what kind of a piece she was and writing. And she said, you know, Dave, I was going to call you after after I got, you know, wrote the piece, and then I was yeah, going to sure. even comment, <laughs> and he's like, "Okay, let's meet." She said, "All right, let's meet. Let's meet on Monday or whatever the date was." Yes, and then she canceled. Okay, she canceled that meeting. I was watching Jesse last night, and he said, "Dave said then she canceled the meeting." But this is just an example, and we've seen it time and time again. Let's here's the criminal. We don't like him. We don't like what he's done. Mm -hmm. So let's find a crime that he's associated with. And now the press mm -hmm. is doing this. They're trying to go after his advertisers and ruin his life and his business. No, no, I would say a little bit different, Ainsley. I say, here's the person. Let's find something wrong with them because we don't yeah, like we who he is. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Here's the person. Here's a guy that's done a lot for our community, but we don't like his platform. Or maybe he said right. positive things about Trump. We're going to go after him. So let's wait and we'll find out what exactly she writes because uh, Dave Portney has one impression. Let's see what she actually does do. Uh I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.